So whatever. I don't know, Richie. Why don't you do some thinking once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. PhD, why the hell aren't you thinking enough? <clears throat> nice. So I told Richie not to talk over you, so he decided to burp over you? I mean, it, it, you know, technically he didn't talk over me. It's true. Mm. I could feel the anger through the microphone. I could feel it. <laughs> it's like heat waves coming out. I'm like, oh, someone's not happy. In this episode of Gaming in the Yeltsin Years, we're going to talk about Castlevania... And we're mostly going to focus on Symphony of the Night, because that is kind of the fulcrum on which the series has turned. You can kind of divide it into pre- and post-Symphony of the Night games. And with us, we have a Castlevania expert, and that is Neola. Hi. <laughs> That's a big lie. But I really do <laughs> love the series very much, and I have played you, most of You it. named your dog after the series. Look, okay, it's true. His name is <laughs> Belmont. He couldn't be Simon because he looks too stupid as a Simon. Like, Simon <laughs> Belmont is the pinnacle of, like, everything I love about Castlevania, but my dog as Simon Belmont, no. <laughs> Belmont's good. Unfortunately, so, people think I named him after a horse race. <laughs> the Belmont Stakes. I'm like, no, I named him after a video game, which isn't any better, really. That's why we wanted you on because, yeah, you, you are you are the expert. So. Oh yes, I sure <laughs> yeah. am. that's why you were here. That's why I've been recently followed by somebody called Castlevania Historian, and I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> <laughs> because if they, re- if they listen to this, they're going to go, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, unsub. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They're like, wrong. Mm-mm, it's all wrong. And I'll be like, you're right. I don't know anything. I just really like it. <laughs> no, I, I've, I, I really dedicate a lot to it. And the game series is screwy as heck. And basically, if you play every game, just... Pretend it's its own world. Doesn't doesn't matter. They don't. Yeah. Well, well, okay, okay. There there is a rough chronology to it at the beginning because the idea was that Dracula can come back to life once every one hundred years. Mm-hmm. But then the series got a bit too popular, so they had to come up with reasons <laughs> for him to come back to life. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> at one point, death resurrects him, which seems self defeating. Yeah, well, he, yeah. death serves him, and I don't. I've never yeah. understood that. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, but death should pretty much be the top dog at this point. But he's not. <laughs> he's a lap dog. Well, then death got his own spin-off in Darksiders. I'm, that's true. Oh my gosh, mm. I didn't think about that. I mean, death in, in every sort of game series, like, is just way cooler than Dracula. But hey. He can't grow a yeah. beard, so he obviously isn't as cool as Dracula. I mean, I don't know why that matters, but it does to me. <laughs> the best death of all is in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Mm, I will agree with you there. Yeah. Not, not the seventh seal? <laughs> the what? The seventh seal. It's got a pretty good death in it. Next podcast, go through all the different variants of death. Yeah. Go, go through them. Oh, There's no. a lot there. A lot to cover. You you don't understand that by saying that she is now going to do it. Oh, I I fully understand. <laughs> how ma- how many podcasts do you have? Like, I can't count. I, I don't even know. The Snack Covenant. Yeah. Then there's gaming in the Elson years. Then yeah. there's it can't be helped. Then yeah. there's a uh, mysterious world of uh, yeah. Sin and Richie. Yeah. And then there is another one that we have yet to record. Which we haven't made yet. Well, we have episode zero. But is that an episode? Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just realized something, and this is some deep, like, really deep lore that I'm digging into here, but your podcasts feel a little bit like they need a hub world, kind of like in Demon Souls. Mm. And then each yeah. one is a branching path. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, and in the future, we're going to make a podcast titled Dignity City. We just don't know what it's about yet. Oh, please do. That's You need a t-shirt that says that. Like, <laughs> Dignity City Gym. 
<laughs> like I would wear that when I work out. People would be like, what's that? I'm like, oh, I will tell you where Dignis, <laughs> Dignity City lies. <laughs> <laughs> so symphony of the night i don't know there's all these different areas and grand symphony mm-hmm. has fantastic level design and beautiful areas but with four you get a fantastic kind of roller coaster of like frantic areas and then like smooth soft areas and then you get you get you know closer to dracula and you have this buildup that symphony mm. does but it does kind of fall flat to deliver that buildup that I was kind of hoping for when I played it originally years ago. God, PlayStation Two. <laughs> it should be up now. You can see, like, this is mostly for Sin's benefit, right? You can see, like, if you compare the level design in this clip, which is very, very like, there's a lot of platforms that are suspended above nothing, mm-hmm. and you can see that, like, you're jumping, but you're jumping in a very like deliberate way. You don't have a lot of fluidity to you. Well, that's sort yeah. of like, yeah. The first time in, I think it's the first time in the series where you get to control the whip in all directions. So you could just kind of mm. hold your arm out and just jangle it. And that was something that was, I think at the time, revolutionary, at least to me as, you know, as a kid. Yeah. Um, to be able to control that. Whereas if you compare this to the way that the areas in Symphony are designed, like, firstly, Symphony has, it has no bottomless pits in it at all. Oh, that's right. They specifically did yeah. not want those. Yeah. Yeah. And there are, like, areas of Symphony that, in terms of level design, are literally just a straight line with, like, no obstacles. Mm-hmm. Just just a there's lot no- of enemies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, even, sometimes there's not even a lot of enemies. Like, I'm specifically thinking, yeah, um, the Marble Gallery area. Mm. Marble Gallery, it is just a straight line. There's a lot of those in Symphony. It felt... It feels really linear up until the midpoint when the castle turns upside down. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, all right. There's also a lot of, like, um, just copied and pasted kind of level chunks in it. Yes. Like, you'll just have to, there's a, another scene that's basically like Marble Gallery again, but on a 45 degree angle. Where you just go up a really, <laughs> really long flight of stairs. Yeah. And every screen there is an enemy. Yeah. Their levels are very long. That's why, you know, in speed runs that's popular to force him to skid backwards because you could just get through those levels. Yeah. You know, so quickly versus 30 minutes trying to hack your way through it. I mean, without those long levels, the game is 29 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> versus like six to ten hours if you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, it would take me longer because I explore it. That ga- yeah, it's definitely a game meant to be long, and they definitely kind of uh, buffer it with those big levels. Yeah, th- there's a lot of bu- what it, what we would call buffering. Yeah, it, is that why there's no like reverse moonwalk thing in the game? I don't think they intended it to be used that way. I think they just intended it as a dodge, and then people realized you could use it to go faster. Yeah, hmm. and if you get yeah. hit while you're in that dodge, you get catapulted at like ten times the speed, and you just go through all the levels like floating. It's hilarious. <laughs> Watching a speed run of that game is like you just you, you can't blink because it goes by so quick. You're like, what? How? How did they get there? <laughs> oh my gosh! Speed runs of of Symphony have been around a long time, so they have perfected it it to an insane amount. Yeah. Um, hang on, I'm just going to put some footage of the Chris Grimm in the chat. So, like, um, another thing that you probably saw in the the um, footage I put in before is, like, in Castlevania 4, your character has a whip. That's really the only weapon you have. You occasionally get these, like, add weapons that you can throw at range, but you are stuck with the whip, and the whip is very slow. You basically have to stop and commit to swinging it. Whereas, if you look at the thing that's just in the chat now, <laughs> this, I love that. If you saw this, you would think it was like debug mode or something. But <laughs> this is just a sword that you find, and it does this. <laughs> oh my! It's insane. And and if you know what you're doing, and you can stack all these elements and all these you know buffs and whatever, you could just. Oh my gosh, you just annihilate things in that if you know where to go and what to do or which relics to get. And it's hilarious. It really is. I like it because I think it's a blast, but uh, <laughs> it just looks kind of goofy. 
Yeah. Um, I'd say, like, I, I was thinking about, like, wh- why do I actually like this? Because it, it puts up kind of, it, it really puts up, like, you, you press against it and it just, like, melts. Like, if you want to do something, it basically instantly happens. There's no real, like, it doesn't push back. Yeah, well, I mean, you're playing yeah. Alucard, so I, I would imagine that you yeah. would have some level of, wow, I feel like a god at this point. Yeah, and I, I think that's what it is, because it's a game right. that, like, the sense of progression doesn't come from actually overcoming obstacles. It comes from this constant, like, you are constantly given new cool things to do. And it's really fun to play. Yeah. So it's it's just really fun. It feels great. Alucard reminded me a lot of Ben 10, so I liked it. Who's Ben 10? From Cyber City. You wouldn't recognize a goddamn vampire if one jumped up and bit you on the end of your fucking dick. Oh my goodness, yes. Aww. And I love that too. I was I was like, you better show that on that anime series. I'm going to be upset with you. you don't. Because <laughs> I, oh my God, Cyber City is just, it's a childhood thing. I grew up watching yeah. it. And it, it's, it's something that sticks with you. Like, I will not watch the Japanese version of it because I love the dust so much. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know the vampire if it came up and bit you on a dick. It's so relevant to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so relevant. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, yeah, he definitely does. Um, it, it's 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 kind of like in that realm of like Vampire Hunter D and Cyber City, and it comes from not just Igarashi, but uh, other developers that are in that that era, you know, that that have that attachment to those things. So you see a lot of stuff kind of co-inspire with each other in the '90s, late late '80s. And it, uh, Symphony of the Night really captured that pretty good, too. Did you post the same video? No, this is, um, I think this is, like, this is a good point of comparison to, like, the level of power that Alucard has. Oh, right, yeah. To, like, what you are in Castlevania 4, which is, like, this stupid little ball thing. It does almost no damage if it touches (laughs) you, but it just knocks you so far that you fall to your death. And then poor Simon's like, ow, ow, ow. Like, he makes the most pitiful noise. He's like, ow. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, like, gently tickled your foot and you screamed and fell off of the thing. It's not my fault that death ends at the screen. That's just really strange. Yeah. But that's, that's a, like, oh, this room. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. So, like, these, these Medusa heads are in Symphony. Yeah. But because Symphony does not have instant death pits and does not have instant death spikes, um, they can't really hurt you. They just sort of, like, nudge you around. But in this, you can see that, like, they don't do a ton of damage, but if they hit you, you just go flying and you fall off and die. It's, it's oh my gosh, that room in particular is obnoxious, yeah. but everything in 4 wants to kill you and probably will at some point. I'm just, I'm putting another one in now that, that's, like, showing off the Mode 7 stuff that's in that room. Gosh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think yes, yeah, so I think we can talk a bit about like the way that Castlevania Four was a a tech demo in some ways. It was a very early SNES release. From that to Symphony, and I did see a lot of I don't know. I feel like a stepping stone. Um, yeah, cause, yeah, because there, yeah, there's polygons in Symphony, but they're not shoved in your face the way that this game shoves mode seven in your face. It's mostly the, the, the save room and then the coffins occasionally will, you know, feel yeah. pretty. There's, there's polygons in like the, the sky in the background in some areas is a polygon with the, the clouds rushing past. And there's like a polygon clock tower in the background, but. Oh, right. I kind of forgot yeah. about that. Oh, it's been a yeah. small one. But this, I mean, Castlevania four is just like, look what we can do with the SNES. Yeah, it just, really is. Like, they went crazy with it. You just come to this room, and then you think, oh, I'll just attach my whip to this thing, and it's like, <gasps> no. And then you can move while you're doing it. This is sorcery. <laughs> yeah, and it looks really strange as all the pixels begin to, like... Yeah, they don't Yeah, quite, they, they don't yeah. like it. Like, I can't remember the... Uh, the yeah, this specific, the the rolling tube... Yeah, it blew my mind as a kid. I was like, I, I'm going to feel sick, but this is amazing. Because <laughs> when you're playing it on like a screen, you're like, Bleh. 
not good. <laughs> so is this what inspired Inception? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. You know, we are so lucky they did not go th- make the Castlevania live action movie they wanted to make. <laughs> oh yeah, with by the, the Resident Evil guy. Mm-hmm. Well, mm. or unlucky, because then we'd have another podcast. He he may have put Mila Jovovich in it because they were married at the time. Oh well, you know, I'd actually probably watch mm. it if she was. In there you go. <laughs> but no, they they released the script of the original idea, and it was going to be like modern era teenage Belmont. So I'm like, oh, this is Dragon Ball <laughs> all over again. It's literally just Dragon Ball the movie. Like, no, please, Simon in high school, I can't do this. <laughs> No, oh, we already have that. It's called Twilight. Oh, no. You're right. <laughs> and, the, and the vampires just progressively got prettier, too, as time went mm-hmm. on. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, Alucard probably sparkles like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Uh, can you imagine his hair? <laughs> it's like liquid, <laughs> like platinum, just in the wind. You're just like, oh, he's pretty. Oh, they did release a recent statue of him, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot afford it, but oh my goodness. Too bad I don't like him as a character, so eh. (laughs) I may think he's pretty, but he's not my favorite. (laughs) So in in contrast to all these, like, kind of gimmicky and difficult levels, I'm just going to post another video that is, like, me fighting various bosses in Symphony. All right. Oh my god, the Which, elevator level in four. Ugh. Yeah, no, that is that is another example of like they never really do anything like that again. It's well, it's it's a horrible design. I mean, it's scary. Like as a yeah. kid, my heart was racing. Yeah. But oh, it's so spooky. It, all you gotta do is go forward, but the whole concept is like, oh, if I stop, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I gotta go all the way back. And you don't even realize this era, you didn't get saves. You had little passwords that you had to put in. And so the back of all like I used to rent this game, bought it. And the back of every manual, there was like six pages pa- of passwords people wrote in to help people who rented it later. Uh-huh. It was yeah. such a cool, like little cultural thing with renting games. Yeah. I kind of miss that. And notes and stuff like it, it was we didn't have the internet so we were just like yeah you go here and you do this and you get pot roast and it's like thanks thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> is this you playing this is me playing okay <laughs> the level of disdain like hmm she's judging it <laughs> yeah. I saw a lot of things that reminded me of Dark Souls slash Bloodborne in Castlevania. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, there was Maria in the Clockwork Tower, Mm -hmm. then there was a Holy Sword, then there were Valka statues everywhere, I saw some Bells of Awakening, the Scorpion looking ladies from Dark Souls 2, (laughs) then there was the Monster Flower from Bloodborne, then there was Seath Archives, then there were dolls, then there were Ghost Ladies. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. And then there was, like, a I don't know if it's the same as the holy sword, but there's a floaty sword that looks like a holy sword. And then there was a brain of Mansus looking boss. And then there was like a beast <laughs> hung from a chandelier that looked like the beast from Old Yarnum. Oh, there was also a crystal basement full of like seafood, which is totally sea. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the fishing village. I'm like, no, don't eat them. <laughs> They're not sushi, they're not for you to consume, those poor people. Well. <laughs> I mean, it's there. It's like, and I like snacks, and this is snack covenant. It's time to open up a little sushi boutique down there. It's a fishing <laughs> outlet. Oh, God. Yum. <laughs> Sashimi. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and the other thing, and you mentioned it, there was an upside down castle, and we all know now that Bergenworth would have an upside down version. That would have been really cool. I was waiting for you to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is like <laughs> is is Bloodborne a, a symphony of the night like? Do you think Kanehurst is Castlevania? Yeah, because Alucard is literally a Valblood. 
Uh, a lot of people compare Bloodborne Castlevania and what they would have wanted out of yeah. a more modern one. And that's really what drew me to Bloodborne was, here we go. This is, I mean, this was before the cosmic horror stuff was released. I thought it was going to be vampires and werewolves and Frankensteins and mummies. Like I thought it was going to pull out the movie monsters that are consistently in Castlevania. But I was so wrong. <laughs> I was a hundred percent. I mean, everybody was. We had no idea what it was going to be. C- Cthulhu is in Symphony of the Night, though. That's true. That's yeah. true. One of the things I, I like about Castlevania, it reminds me a lot of Second Edition Dungeons and Dragons. Oh my where, gosh! Yeah. Yeah, there's like a kind of rough idea of like, okay, it's a horror game, so here are the monsters we need, but also we can have anything else we we feel like. Mm-hmm. It's like. <laughs> Frankenstein monsters, werewolves, uh, like some Medusas, but then also like a giant bat that is made out of coins that <laughs> rise out of a treasury. So cool. That turns into tinier bats that then yeah. die. And yeah, they go a little wild with that. And I like that. Yeah. Symphony of the, Symphony of the Night <laughs> takes that like even further where there's like, oh, let's bring in mythos from like every country in the world. Let's make everything a cute girl also and have you fight those. Mm. Which is upsetting because I hate killing the cute girl monsters. Oh. I like the, the cute witches that turn into cats. Mm-hmm. I thought that was the best thing ever. Th- that I think can segue into just the amount of weird shit that is in this game that no one is going to find and is ultimately useless. So, like, when you say the the cute girls turn into cats when you defeat them, there is an item called the cat eye circlet that if you wear it, it says restores hit points by cat damage. So if you wear it, it has literally no application outside of. If you beat those girls and they turn into the cat and the cat touches you, you get hit points back. Oh, snap. That's <laughs> yeah, blood for yeah. There are so many <laughs> items in that game. And some of them are just hilarious and bizarre. But it really makes the game very charming for that reason. Yeah, the, the, it's full of just all this weird shit you can do. But also because the game like is not terribly... like challenging a lot of the time there's no reason to do it beyond just showing off that you can mm-hmm. like, it reminds me a lot of um a lot of final fantasy 6 where like 90 percent of the abilities you get in that game don't really have any application outside of challenge runs yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much so i i've i've pasted another video in um, this is showing off just some weapons I picked up, like, while I was playing. So, there's, like, a sword that, when you use it, flies out in front of you and then goes back like a boomerang. I love that. I love fighting the thing that, oh, the thing that comes from calls out a bunch of other weapons, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I don't know what it is, but there's something so cool about that monster, and I'm like, I love it! Oh, look at all these guys. Holy crap. Yeah. So, um, in between that was the shield rod, which we'll get into later on. But, like, it has a command that if you use it, it creates the shields from Gradius. The oh other my Konami, gosh. Like, the shoot them up. Yeah. And they just sit in front of you and block projectiles. But, like, you'll never use that. And if even if you get hit, everything does about one damage after you've played it for a few hours because you just get so powerful. Do you know why that they chose all these different weapons? Because I, I recently read something that discussed that. Yeah? Why, why do they? Um, because everybody on the staff liked a different type of blade, and they couldn't decide, oh. so they just put them all in there. <laughs> like, okay! <laughs> if, I mean, yeah, go for it! I would do it! I'd be like, I've got yeah, three, four hundred staff, y'all pick a sword you like. And let's put something in there. Like, it's, it's, I believe it. I couldn't find any verification. It was in an article. Yeah. But it was a really, like, it's, it's a cute thought. You're like, oh, everybody gets their little piece of this, you know? If somebody uh-huh. likes the Sailor Moon rod, and there you go. You get it in the game. <laughs> and the third one I've posted is, like, the most bizarre, which is a sword called the Sword of Dawn. And if you use it as just a regular sword, but then if you input a Street Fighter fireball motion, Instead of striking, it flies out in front of you and it summons one of, like, four random skeletons that yes, just walk forward them. and hit, hit whatever is in front of you. <laughs> but the thing is, 
<laughs> the skeletons, if you do that, they all do less damage than if you just hit someone with the sword. Yeah, it's just for a matter <laughs> yeah. of like, you're like, yeah, do it, go! And you're like, Yeah, okay. it's just like, it'd be cool if this happened. <laughs> And there and there's descriptions like another thing that could tie so easily into software things is they love descriptions on every single item. And mm. and they they all explain little things here and there, and usually not story related. It's just yeah. mm, it's a plate of food. Good job. You know, they're they're very snarky. Uh and I've always really enjoyed mm. that. I love collecting yeah. stuff in that game that they really prey on that. Well, speaking of snacks, I was very surprised that all of the snacks looked very realistic and delicious. Whoever made this is like the gourmand equivalent of horny on me. Like <laughs> there is the pixel work on that food is incredible. This game, yeah. like they originally were going to go with a 3D and they could not figure out a way to get it to run smoothly. So they went with Sprite because Unfortunately, they thought sprite work. Oh my gosh, that that summon with the lady is so pretty. But um, sorry, I'm just looking at all these videos like, oh, this game is so pretty. But uh, they they just lovingly crafted this game to prove that yeah, no sprite stuff is still beautiful. You will like this uh, because at the time, you know, everybody was getting into the 3D era of gaming. Mm. I mean, I wasn't. I kind of found it hideous, so I was very excited when this came out. But yeah. Um, it, it was a really interesting choice, and it was a huge risk because they were afraid that the sprites were going to drive away customers. And at first, it did. Mm. It did not do well in the West at all yeah. in the very beginning. Um, granted, the box was horrible, but you know, <laughs> that's typical, unfortunately. Versus the beautiful box in Japan that has the you know paintings on it and everything. Mm. I'm just looking through all these items. There are just hundreds of items. I always forget yeah, how many yeah, there are. Art. But yeah, the snack art is beautiful. Like when I picked something up and then I was streaming it, right? And somebody was like, oh, to get HP, like eat that item. And it was like a whole breakfast and eggs and everything. And I'm like, oh my God. Yes. Yeah. You're like, oh, this game makes me hungry. Yeah. It does. Like all the food is just like Alucard knows what he likes. He's a foodie. He's really popular on Yelp. <laughs> he knows what he wants and he wants good food. And he used to live here. So maybe these are all put in the walls prepared for him later. Yeah. So I wonder like, how oh. they keep the food fresh though. I mean, they're vampires. Maybe they have some like mystical magic crap that yeah. keeps food fresh or Ziploc. I mean, yeah. Well, the early games, in the early games, Dracula does keep a lot of beef in his walls. He does. He really yeah. does. Oh, it's because, like, you make beef jerky. He's he's really a grill master, if you think about it. Mm. Um, he really should have had his own cooking show. He would have been fantastic. <laughs> I would have watched him. I mean, holy crap. <laughs> Actually, what's funny about the Castlevania food thing is it's become its own... Uh, not meme so much as like this own oh, this, this thing that people put in other games. Like I was playing Dead Cells, and you could decide to have all the food look like Castlevania food. Oh, yeah, it, which is a really cute like it, it's a super cute nod. And, and other games do the same thing. We're like ah ha ha wall meat, and and so it's it's a joke that's made in so many other realms of games and media <laughs> because it's so weird. It, you know crack two or three bricks you're like oh there's a whole pot roast on a plate <laughs> like how why <laughs> i'm sure simon's just like should i eat this, this? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but like something about something the night that just like drove me to continue is like you've got music you've got beautiful art you've got the sprites you've got campy voice acting that still mm. i you remember it everybody remembers yeah. it and then you've got fantastic sound effect. It's yeah. like this game has everything it could have to be amazing. Yeah, so, so much of the impact is the aesthetics of it rather than, like, the design of it. Like, um, Sin was bringing up when we were talking about the Marvel Gallery that there was the Scorpion Lady from Dark Souls. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that monster is, like, really, really cool. It is this, like, weird dinosaur thing that... It's it has no head, it just has this mouth, and then out of its tail is growing this woman who's throwing fireballs at you. 
And if you try to hit the dinosaur part, you don't do any damage. No, if you try to hit the woman, you do no damage. You have to hit the dinosaur part. But it's set up so that you can stand on it and attack the woman separately. Yes. I always, yeah. I always thought that was so cool. Yeah. But, like, also, if you're playing it, as soon as you see it, you'll just hit it and it'll die. So it's just this level of, like, they put all this attention and detail into this thing that you're probably just going to, like, kill immediately. Yeah. And that's that why you really go back and play it, it yeah. you know, a few times. Because you're like, oh my yeah. god, these are beautiful. So much of it, like, doesn't, I feel like doesn't get a chance to really shine. Like, there are bosses that have attacks that I've never seen. Because they die so quickly. It's one of those games that's just, it's beautiful, but it's kind of infinitely beautiful. So it takes so long to really absorb how large it is in scope of what they were doing with it. Yeah. Um, and then there's all this secret crap in it too. And like things that make no sense. Like there's, if you can get footage of the confessional, you go to a confessional and you sit down and a priest will show up and sit down and talk to you. Usually he will stab you. However, sometimes he won't and he will listen to you and then like bless you or whatever. And you're done. And there's no reason for it. It's just a strange yep. interaction. It's beautiful. But if you go sit on the other side, there is a monster that is a woman in a painting and she like throws things at you. She will come and sit down and she will always stab you. <clears throat> and sometimes she's a different color. Oh, no, wait, I was wrong. There is a chance that a weeping woman will come in blue and you listen to her and then it's over. So there's these little mm. tiny elements of the game that people are still finding. And they're like, what does this mean? Yeah. What is it? It's so great. That was something that stopped me and go, wait a minute, what the hell? Another really weird one that I like is in the, in the, um, like the whole area at the start of the game, there's a rock passageway. And if you go through from the right to the left in wolf form, then morph into a bat and go through it from left to right as a bat. That opens a door in the bottom of the room. <laughs> yeah! And inside it is a sword that sucks, but its special property is that whenever you hit something with it, it always drops a gemstone that you can sell. It overwrites whatever the thing would have dropped with a random gemstone. So it's like, if you want money, yeah, you pick up this sword and you just kill weak enemies with it and get a ton of gems. It's just so rife with that specific sort of thing. And it's something I don't see in a lot of games. Like, it's stuff yeah. that you would never find without tripping over it or knowing something about it. And, of course, you know, Miyazaki is real good at that, but not many other game series do that. And Symphony mm. of the Night is one where they keep coming back to. And what is nice about Symphony and also kind of a curse, is that everything after Symphony of the Night tried to be Symphony of the Night. Yeah, which is, I think, like, it, when we talked with uh, Aegon about Metroid, one of the things that came up was, like, the first three Metroid games are all their own entity. But then because Super Metroid was so successful, that kind of ossified, okay, that's the right way to do it. So every Metroid game after that has to be a clone of Super Metroid. And then we also have to go back and remake the first two. So they play like Super Metroid with, with the attitude that the differences were mistakes. That we're now correcting rather than that was the individual character of that game. What's nice is, is you're, you're covering both the Metroid and the Vania aspect of that because they both were so integral to game development mm. uh, that they've permeated like with ripples throughout the gaming community for years so metroidvania has become just a huge term in terms of yeah. how a game plays uh and unfortunately just like metroid symphony of the night now has or had um konami going back and wanting to do things over and over again yes when of course the first three games we're just fine as they are but you know it's like they want to capture that magic and they want to make bank but they never they did good with like the handheld games but those weren't widespread games those were handhelds and in the west mm. we don't really take to handhelds so of course in japan big deal they love handhelds but over here no and so unfortunately that that magic that symphony had was kind of lost uh, as as they kept repeating it over and over and digging, you know, beating a dead horse with it, basically. Yeah. 
that that came up on the on the Metroid episode as well, where like we were talking about there weren't that many Castlevania games, and then Aegon was reading it, and he's like, okay, but then after this point, it's like they're annual, and they're all basically the same formula. Yes, yes, <laughs> they did become annual up until yeah. like Konami finally kind of folded in on itself, but yeah, um, it, which is too bad because the last the last game they did was just oh no, it was so bad. I played which it. Was that? Uh, that was uh, Lord of Shadows 2. I haven't played that. Don't. I won't. <laughs> um, Lord of Shadows 1 is, is a refreshing, fun take. It's weird, and it's not very Castlevania-like, but it had some some cool ideas. And at the end of that, you go on to 2, and you become Dracula. <laughs> In the modern world! <laughs> and you turn into rats and stuff. It's so demeaning, and it's so sad. <laughs> And you're just like, I hate my life. And I'm like, you know, if he was like aware of how pathetic he was, it would be more funny and more enjoyable. But he's dead serious. Like, I'm the Lord of the Night. Everybody's like, yeah, screw off. It's really pathetic. I and just, I just need to go and shut the cat up. I'm sorry. Oh, I need to go close my doors. So he's going to keep meowing unless I do something. Thankfully, we can't hear him. So I'll be back too. All right, I am back. Hello. Is not back? Hello. I'm back now. Nobody asked you to come. Back. <laughs> I know. I, I held back on saying something because I knew you were right. Because <laughs> usually I'm, I'm a sarcastic little shit too. And I'm like, no, we, did, we didn't. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is sin is not being sarcastic. She actually doesn't want me to come back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's that's a rough one. <laughs> what I really liked about this game is the dialogue. Yeah. Like, did you like the dialogue or the text? No, I liked both. Oh, good. Okay. I, yeah, like when Dracula's like, what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets? I'm like, yeah. You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. <laughs> wow, you really are the man in many voices. Um, (laughs) (laughs) you know how in the end when dracula's defeated and alucard is like you have been doomed ever since you lost the ability to love and then dracula's (laughs) like ah sarcasm (laughs) (laughs) oh sarcasm oh i i do love the line and which is funny because this is i think igarashi's favorite line in the game and it's when uh, uh, Alucard mentioned something about his mother's soul resting. And I'm like, oh, that- mm. that's so tragic. He's so pretty. Yeah. How many romance novels have been written about him? Probably a lot. Mm. <laughs> Did you hear the ending song at all, Sin? This is very important. Okay, so in the end, where Maria's like, I'm sorry, I can't let him disappear from my life. And then she runs after Alucard, right? I yeah. enjoyed every like soundtrack in the game so far like i thought every level was perfect and had awesome music mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and then it was like a, a weird saxophone <laughs> song <laughs> i am the wind oh gosh i am the wind i am dead a classic. <laughs> the saxophone really ties it to- <laughs> <laughs> i didn't necessarily understand what was happening at that point? <laughs> Good, that's exactly the reaction. Because <laughs> when I first heard that, I, I was just like, "What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> no!" Like, and, and this was after you know a lot of '90s like Billy Ocean and saxophone stuff. I'm like, "This is not. This is not right." <laughs> And so I played the ending again. And I'm like, this is not a mistake. This is real. This, this is about true love. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's become one of my favorite video games. Like, it's beautiful. I'm just like, yeah. And then yeah. I kind of sing to it. I'm like, it's not good. It just really, <laughs> really shows off how much variety is in the. Yeah. 
Oh, so I know what happened. You know how everybody got to put a cool sword in the game, but there was this one person who's like, I don't like sword. I only like songs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I know somebody who can sing this. Let's do this. <laughs> I tried to find an article about why, like, what is the deal with that song? I could not find anything. Like, it, they just, maybe they just really like and And I don't know if it plays in Japanese on the Japanese but I have a feeling it's just in English no matter what. Yeah. Because <laughs> it really is like like uh, um, it's just oh my god. <laughs> like it blows my mind even now. Look, just like the sun when my day's done sometimes <laughs> I don't like the person I've become. Which is something <laughs> apparently the sun thinks that at the end of the day, like Sun is just like, man, I really love myself go. At the end of the day, the sun just has an existential crisis. Oh my god. Maybe the sun is thinking about Soleil. Oh, long lost yeah. love. The sun. Oh, I needed to ask you guys something before I forget. So, when you walk around, there's one room that is the CD room. Yes. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> That's a loading screen. Were you told to ask that? No, no. no. I was no. like, every time I pass by, there's a CD room. I like, literally called it. I called it. My life. My life. Right. Well, I thought maybe Dracula, like, didn't. They didn't have MP3s back then, so they had to use That's CDs. True. <laughs> so he has his CD room. It's where you're supposed to, like, find a CD item and insert it there. It's, it's a really important, like, it's, it's a special item. And you have to find it. And it's, it's legit a CD. And you stand in the middle. Like, I don't know if you're joking or not. I'll be honest. I'm not. I'm not. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, funny. it's something that the, the developer did put in there. And so it is a CD. You wait in the middle. And after a couple seconds, he pulls it out. And a Walkman. And then he does, like, the whole Michael Jackson dance. And I am the wind plays. Like, I still don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> That room is a loading screen. Back in the day. Oh, really? It's it's just there so the game's got time to load the next zone. Yeah. Oh, I actually asked you about yeah. that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, new generations of people are not going to have any idea. I just didn't think you would ask that. I did. I. I I didn't have loading screens growing up. Like, Donkey Kong had no loading screens. Well, yeah, you, you, like, skipped directly from the, like, 16-bit to PS3, basically. No. No, I had a PS1. And you never encountered a loading screen? No, there were no- Crash Bandicoot had no loading screen. Oh, yeah, it did. You just didn't realize- No, it's got a full-on, like, dopey loading, like, I'm loading with funny yellow letter. Yeah, that's, like, that's part of the game. It's not loading. Well, this is part of the game, but there's no CD involved. <laughs> I would have rather him pull out a Walkman, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Put on, like, some sunglasses. Like, you see, loading screen to me means, like, when you die, the game has a 45-second screen that just says Bloodborne on it, and you just sit mm. there and wait. Yeah. Well, on, on the Saturn port, because they didn't optimize it very well, it has those rooms and loading screens. Yes. So you go through that oh. room, and then there's another loading screen, and then the next room loads. <laughs> no, I love the CD rooms. Um, I think they're super adorable, and I, I want to see somebody who never played it. Oh, actually, you just gave me everything I ever wanted. <laughs> it's my birthday soon. You just gave me my birthday present. You're welcome. <laughs> I was literally like, yeah, I just want to ask what that's for. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> She, how do you know these things? Like, how do you know this stuff before people even mention it? You really are good at it. <laughs> That's because you're you have a deeper bond with the snack covenant, and now you can predict the future. Oh my gosh, I, I did, yeah. I did throw on a lot of donuts and coffee to it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, my, my rank is kind of up, up there. Yeah. Mm. I need to go yeah. beat the crap out of some scrub and get more. <laughs> So I, I was wondering about the actual castle, because when you enter, like you're a la carte and you're into the castle and then there's a bunch of random monsters and skeletons and mummies. And then this chick comes by. She's like, hey, I'm here to like find my friend or kill your father. I don't know. It's just like everybody just chills there. Is that normal? 
Well, the mo- the most mystifying Maria appearance is when you have to like get the mist form and the spike breaking armor and the opening jewel to get through this passageway that is just like constant death otherwise. And then she's just sitting there in a room that there's no other way into. <laughs> she's being all coy and crap. It's like, no, I know yeah. you have a crush on him. Wake up, Maria. Jesus. <laughs> and then she just walks out. She walks out into a room that, that has spikes for the floor and the ceiling. And yet somehow she lifts through it. Mm. She, she's bombing. Well, we should maybe talk about like that Maria probably could live through that. That's true, yeah. Because, right. Okay. Um, depending on which version you have, going into New Game Plus will allow you to play as Maria, as both an adult and a child, and Richter. And Maria, as an adult, is a, like, crazy ninja. <laughs> she can, like, there's, she's very popular with speedruns. Yes. Because she oh can just, like, she works like a Street Fighter character where you input, like, like, a Street Fighter move kind of things, and she will just launch herself across the room, like, doing these massive <laughs> jump kicks. She's like, she's like, oh my god, she's this yeah. super, like, Street Fighter and, babe. I'm like, all right. Yeah, and, like, yeah. R- Richter is similar, and he can actually fly. He can just continuously <laughs> uppercut into the sky from with nothing below him and just shoot up, like, directly up. Oh my gosh, you gotta sometimes play a clip yeah. of just the skidding noise. <laughs> he does this whole, <laughs> The skid is like a tire on freaking yeah. roads. Like, yeah. I'm like, no, that is not <laughs> how that sound. It's not realistic <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> yeah, everything up to that point was extremely realistic, but that one thing, man, that's so realistic. much for realism. <laughs> you just showed us a uh, clip of my favorite level, which is the uh, is no, the beginning of it is the um the caves, the caverns. Yeah, I thought I'd put this in because we talked about like Alucard going to the castle. And this is something that, that the games, um, they don't really do this, maybe they do, like, after Symphony, but, like, in the early Castlevanias, the journey to the castle is, a, is like, half the game. Yeah, the courtyard itself is is a big part of it. Um, yeah. Later on, they, well, later on, a lot of the games, like, uh, the castle is inside of the Eclipse of the Moon. So yeah. you're already kind of there, and I don't want to spoil it, so I want to explain why you're able. Yeah. To. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, there really isn't a there isn't a build up uh, in in some of the much much later ones like uh, Lords of Shadow. There's a bit more of a lead up because, of course, you know, 3D you got to have big, expensive, beautiful 3D areas. Uh, mm-hmm. But there is no lead up like for and Symphony. Yeah, you just doesn't really have that either. Yeah, Stephanie has a lead up to an upside down version. Of this. Yeah, um, yeah, I kind of missed that lead up because all the yeah. all the earlier Castlevania games really did have that, where they're like, "Yeah, we want yeah. you to really struggle and go through these hordes of monsters and mm. finally get to Dracula," and you're like, "Oh, this is amazing." Well, <laughs> one of, one of the things that um, the early ones do is they will have a map that shows like you're moving closer to Castlevania. And then once you once you get there, yeah, once you get there, it's like this is the end. No, then the map changes to a map of the castle, and you realize you're actually only halfway through, and you've got to go through, yeah, maybe like a third of the way through. Yeah. Your little mini Belmont start going down. You're like, why am I underneath here? What the hell? No, I don't <laughs> want to go underwater. Go away. Go up top. Like it's it's like that's where the clock tower comes in and. And all these areas with the different monsters, because they're those are parts of the castle. It's like you have to defeat all these head ponchos of Dragon Ball's yeah. army before you get to him. Um, other games don't really explore that. The monsters are just we're, we're just kind of here. We just hang out. We just come visit, <laughs> and, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what kind of Symphony did to the series, where it just it didn't put a huge purpose because yeah. after Symphony, there wasn't really a lot of Belmonts anymore. It was mostly, mm. we're going to play vampires and we're going to play Dracula reincarnations. It's like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. One thing Richard mentioned before I watched the walkthrough and tried the game was that he's like, oh, you can literally miss half the game. <laughs> I think I said it like that. Yeah, you literally said it like that. 
<laughs> yeah, just like that. He did it with a... <laughs> <laughs> and then you, like, twirled your mustache. Since photographic memory <laughs> of conversations <laughs> with me has always been going, uh, actually, Sin. <laughs> <laughs> Sin, you can literally miss half the game. <laughs> well, I think I was more like, okay, be careful because you can actually like miss half the game. So, no, I believe her version of it. I know you laugh like that. <laughs> like I, <sighs> I tell you, just totally, you're the most condescending co-host I've ever yeah, met. Yeah, Richie. <laughs> I can't be mean this long. It's hard. How do you maintain it? I just can't do it. Because <laughs> I start laughing. And, then yeah. I and she's, it's not even like just as a co-host. She's just like this to me all the time. <laughs> I mean, she didn't like it. Talk to her. So I don't believe for a minute that I bought the shoe. Please be with me more, friend Sin. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> now that laugh yeah that laugh's gonna be after everything you're <laughs> I'll just insert it <laughs> I'll just edit it in <laughs> you got a button in the radio room I just know it and you're gonna tag it to that laugh <laughs> Richie laugh dot wave <laughs> yeah but recently Richie found out that my boyfriend has it even worse so he's okay yeah I did but also, your boyfriend recently bought a bow and arrow, so maybe, maybe you don't want to cross oh, that's him. That's true. Why? To hunt Wendigo. <laughs> I remember you were like, "My boyfriend has a bow and arrow. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to test him today, so I'm bullying you twice as much." <laughs> can somebody tell us how is it that you can miss half the game? Um, there's a lot of secret passages. There's a lot of points that branch off that are not like the game is not linear at all. There's all kinds of little pieces and the maps don't always tell you. Where but there's one specific moment. There's two. Okay. So okay, what no. happens is, um, another thing what that we talked Jish? about with. <laughs> Actually, what happens is. <laughs> you asked me the question. You're not allowed to mock me for answering a question that you asked. <laughs> <sighs> so, one of the things we talked about with Aegon is that, like, as much as people say Metroidvania games don't use locks and keys, Symphony absolutely uses a ton of locks and keys. <laughs> so, what you need is you need an item called the Echo of the Bat, which is only used in one room. And what it does, it's a dark room, but if you you're in bat form, you use this item, it works like echolocation, so you can see the layout of the room. Mm -hmm. And you move through that room, you get an item called the Spike Breaker, which is a suit of armor that is not useful, but it does break... Sp if you have it equipped and you touch a spike, the spike breaks and you don't take damage, mm -hmm. which is a lot less useful than it sounds because there are not that many spikes in this game. <laughs> you then go way, way all the way back to the top of the tower, and there is a room where the, the one we talked about with Maria, where the top and the bottom of the room are just spikes. So there is no way through without using the spike breaker. You move through that, you go talk to Maria. Maria will, there'll be a cutscene. And then for some reason on the ground, there is an item called the silver ring. And that has on it, um, it's, it just says like ellipsis clock, ellipsis tower. And if you wear that in the clock tower, nothing happens. There is another room that you also cannot get to unless you are in bat form because it is a uh, it's accessed via a door that has no platforms near it, so you can only get there by flying. Mm -hmm. And if you go there, you find a strange save point that is purple instead of red. Mm -hmm. If you use it instead of saving, you go into a dream sequence where Alucard sees his mother uh, being because his mother was burned as a witch because she was in love with Dracula, and she was a human, so yeah. So Alucard sees a vision of her being burned, but then she says to him, like, remember to always hate humans because they killed me. And then he's like, my mother would never say that. And it's revealed that I she's not- I don't think not that's what she said, though. Or something like that. She tells she tells him to kill them. And then he's yeah, like- Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the exact line. Yeah. The point is it's not his mother. <laughs> because his mother would not say that. 
and it's revealed that it's not his mother. It is, it is the succubus who is impersonating her. You fight the succubus. She dies, and you get the uh, another ring called the gold ring that says like, um, where ellipsis, uh in or something. So when if you combine the gold and silver rings, they form the message where in the clock tower. So you go to the clock with both those rings on. It makes the floor open up. And then you can go down there and then you will get a pair of magic glasses from Maria, who I guess had the rings. <laughs> Maria's whole purpose is to appear in places that there's no way to access. So Maria is just down there, she gives you these these glasses. <laughs> Then you go to the final boss of this castle, who is Richter, and he's being possessed by the evil priest Shaft. God damn, I hate him. <laughs> if you put the glasses on when you fight Richter, you can see that there is a green orb that is hovering above his head and kind of like shooting lightning into it. So you avoid fighting Richter, you just fight the orb. When the orb is destroyed, that reveals that, like, Richter is now free of the curse, and for some reason, when that happens, an upside down but otherwise identical copy of the castle appears out of a cloud. And then turns out that Dracula is in that castle. <laughs> Dracula so you- is in another castle. <laughs> you then walk to that castle, and then you basically do the entire game again upside down. Mm-hmm. But with different enemies. Yeah, it's a fun way to to do it, though. And they did a really yeah. good job adding. Yeah, and at that point, you already obviously you have like the bat form and the wolf form and everything, so you can go basically anywhere you want. And your goal was just to fight Dracula. There, you need to find five items to unlock it. Yeah, is it the same yeah. exact castle upside down? Or? Yes. Oh well, there's like very very minor differences. Like there'll be um traps in rooms differently. And there's like, access to different places, and some of the color palettes are different, but... Um, yeah. It's really, it's swapped to make you disoriented, and to kind of push yeah. the game for another six hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's the part I kind of hated playing, was the upside. Yeah, it's it's like, it's cool that it's there. But <laughs> I don't think it's it's actually that necessary. It shouldn't be, at least, but it is. I mean, it. it I wish it was kind of an optional thing to explore. Uh, but unfortunately, mm. yeah, to get to Dracula, yeah. there you mm. go. Which yeah. may be the basis of where they took the storyline later on, where Dracula's castle is just inside of an eclipse, so you never get to it. Because it's like, yeah, the, the dark, the eclipse, the other side. Uh, yeah. Mirrors and all that. Japan loves mirrors. They think they're evil. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, if that's Dracula. He's evil. Yeah. The thing is, if if you kill Richter without defeating the orb thing, Richter just dies. And that's, like, the bad ending. So if you want the good ending, you do have to do the whole upside-down castle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so his mother said, you cannot, live, you cannot live with them, you can only hate them, do them harm. And then she's like, or the person impersonating the mother, she's like, there is such a hard lot. Release them from their pain. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of sweet. Hmm. That's a succubus, mm. though. Well, I feel like the succubus understands that our lives are hard ones. Like, we've got to work, we've got to eat, yeah. we've got to yeah, sleep. Free them by like... just murdering them. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. murder them all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if from a monster's point of view, she's right. Yeah. yeah. But his mother would never say that. No. And that's why Dracula is mad. Because she was pure and wonderful. She got burned as a witch, but she wasn't a witch. So now he's mad he's going to collab with her. Mm. He's just having a big freaking tantrum. Every- yeah. It's like, knock it off. See, the original thing is like, only the Belmonts were supposed to be the ones that put them down. And then suddenly, yeah. you know, Alucard comes along and it's like, wait, you're not a Belmont. Yeah, this is like we talked about before, where the, the original setup of the game was Dracula comes back every hundred years. But then they ran out of centuries. Because they'd be <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, we can really only take this as far as, like, the very, very early 20th before it, it stops making any sense at all. Unless they make a modern era one. It's like, no. Well, no. imagine if they did that. 
They want to. I mean, they, they did. did. Wait, they did. Yeah. That's the right. Sorrow oh, Games are that. Yeah. I forget that they like. Oh my god. Yeah. But only for a short amount of time is really a modern thing because yo, well, you, can get, a, you can get a laser cannon in it. Yeah, that's it's pretty <laughs> modern. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, like, the castle is kind of always the castle, regardless of when it shows up. So when it shows up in, like, the 21st century over modern Tokyo, it's still, mm. like, a gothic ruined castle. It's great that, like, you're a little transfer student. You're like, oh, geez, we're at a Tory gate. I wonder what's going to happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, bad things happen during full- Well, like, it's it's been a while, so do you want to talk about, like, the whole Soma thing? As, like, to sort of where the story... Okay, so there's two games called uh, Aria of Sorrow and Dawn of Sorrow that are, like, they just say, like, in between these games. There is another Belmont guy called Julius Belmont. He's and one of the best, by the way. He's one of the best the, characters. He's the coolest Belmont, apparently. He really, he's like most, he really he's is. He's the most powerful, yeah. Yeah. And what they do is they say, well, in between these two games, there was something that you can't play, where Julius Belmont just killed Dracula forever, and he's never coming back again. So Dracula's gone, but- I mean, Julius has a mustache, so obviously yeah. he's more powerful. <laughs> he's the coolest. <laughs> so then, but, oh no, Castlevania's back, even though Dracula's not around. And my incredibly pretty transfer student- so much. So much. <laughs> so, who, who is, like, the most... Like, if you think Aluka is anime, <laughs> Soma is just, like... Soma's, like, if you if, if you got Alucard and, like, squared. Like, everything about Alucard is more with Soma. He is so, like, like graceful and sort of, like... And got, the first game is by the same artist, so, of course, she made yeah. him absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like, <laughs> they went with a different style. Though. Yeah. So he ends up in Castlevania somehow, and his girlfriend has been captured. And then while he's hanging around Castlevania, he realizes that, oh, I somehow have the ability to absorb people's souls. That's weird. <laughs> so the game, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, weird. And- That's weird. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> Uh, and here's what he became. Hmm. 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 It wasn't the game was great? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. I just look. It's Benton again. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, except this is a really young, snappy eighteen. Yeah. He's meant. He's like an eighteen-year-old transfer student. Yeah. He's. Yeah. yeah. And here's the full. Here's the full beautiful, glorious outfit for you. Nice bell bottoms, by the way. It's just, it's perfect. It's so we good. call them elephant pants. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god, I love that name. That's perfect. That's, that's <laughs> way cuter. It's like elephant legs or whatever. Because <laughs> they're so big at the bottom. I like it much better than bell bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's pas d'éléphant. Bon. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> It's a pot d'éléphant, so yeah, elephant's feet or oh. whatever, elephant oh paws. Oh my god, yeah. I'm going to remember that forever. <laughs> I actually have a few pairs, so I'm just like, I love these stupid things. Now they're called, like, boot cut. I'm like, oh, they're just freaking so <laughs> He should be wearing, like, a pair of skater Jinko jeans. Like, the ones with pockets so big, you could stuff, like, five kids in Like, from, from the <laughs> 90s, he would look so good with a gigantic pair of and, <laughs> and like a few gold chains to break up that black shirt. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But he's very pretty, yes. So yeah, he he goes around Castlevania absorbing souls. That's how he gets stronger. Uh-huh. Um, the way it works is that like you kill enemies, and then every time you kill an enemy, there's a chance it will drop its soul. You absorb the soul. The soul is the equivalent of like. It'll give you a buff, or it'll function as a projectile weapon, or something. You you equip the souls to various buttons. It, it's Pokemon so, Castlevania. Yeah, at this point. yeah. You've got to try to capture the soul of every enemy to fill out your it, little, it's like, really bestiary. fun, though. It's really fun. Yeah. I love it. So it turns out that like after he goes through the castle, he starts getting powers that are very similar to the ones Dracula has, and then oh no, 
it turns out that uh, when Julius Belmont killed Dracula, uh, Dracula, Dracula was reincarnated. No. And you're actually Dracula. <laughs> no. Dracula became a transfer student. <laughs> Dracula's reincarnated as this Bishonen transfer student. Why did this become a freaking anime? It would have been great. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like, you are your own person, but you also have, like, Dracula's essence. Oh. And then the game, and then depending on what you do, it can branch off in two directions. And you can either like embrace being Dracula, and then mm-hmm. you take over Castlevania and become the new Dracula, uh-huh. or you can fight against that mm-hmm. and stay who you are. So that's kind of how they do it. Yeah, they say like that Dracula's gone, but the castle itself is eternal. So we can have as many Castlevania games as we want, as long, but we don't necessarily need Dracula. There is somebody yeah. very interesting that does. Oh yeah. What what's his name? Um you know, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, his name, Genya his name is Aricado. Aricado. Genya. Oh, Genya. Oh. Genya. Oh. Genya. I uh, see. Yeah. Who who could this be? Um, he may have dyed his hair a little bit. He may have <laughs> cut his hair a little bit. Is this Ludwig? Oh my god. How did you know? I have an intuitive understanding of Castlevania. <laughs> it's true. This is my canon. Like that's what he looks like. <laughs> but yeah, so he shows up and he helps you out. Um, really, not really that much. Yeah. <laughs> He's just kind of like, "Hey, I'm wearing a really ill-fitting suit," huh? <laughs> and you're like, hey, "You look great. You look good. How's the kid?" And and these ones all play out like symphony. Like they're a big open castle map. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're all pixel, and they're they're really really fantastic. They reuse a lot of the graphics. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, they they size yeah. down a lot of it, and because it's smaller, some of the monsters look super squishy. <laughs> 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 Actually, uh, I can't remember. No, that I I found a tidbit about the the music and how amazing mm-hmm. the music is is by a um, I feel so bad I don't know her name. She was in her fourth year of college. Like she decided wow. to go do that. So she just kind of left everything to go and just perform all this amazing music for this game. Um, I don't know too much else about it beyond that. Michiru but... Yamane? Yes, that's her name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, what's great is they like they have all this gothic stuff, but they they just like throw in a bunch of jazz in there, and you're like, yeah, this is <laughs> yeah, I'm getting good. Um, which is just, it's it's such a great soundtrack. And you know exactly what level each one is that represents. Mm. It's it's really interesting. I have to see what else she's done because I just I really enjoy that soundtrack. Even the last song, which is part just the best part, really. Mm. I mean, you could play "I Am the Wind" on like a golden oldie station on radio right now. Nobody yeah. would know. <laughs> Nobody would know. So, do you think those CD rooms were a foreshadowing of I Am The Wind? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, maybe they were telling you to be into an actual CD. Sorry, you cut out maybe what? Maybe those CD things were secretly telling you what to put in the CD player. Like, they're like, just yeah. pop this in there and <laughs> you will get a special surprise. And it's out of telling you to do it. Legitimately, as a 13-year-old, I thought it was something like that, because I didn't understand what they were. <laughs> and I thought it was saying, like, oh, is this a room where, like, you can take the disc out and put a different disc in, and it'll, like, play that as the soundtrack? Because mm-hmm. there were games that did that. Yeah. yeah like, um, one of the Ridge Racer games did that. Oh, that's like, it would, Yeah, it would store the whole game in the RAM, so it didn't actually need the disc. So you could put a disc in and it would just play that as the sound. Yeah, and that was yeah. like that was a big plus for that. Yeah. Yeah. Ridge Racer was way ahead of its time with that. Yeah. Um I for some reason I, I like your memories are always different, you know, and you look back on them. I thought that CD room had like a glowing neon rainbow CD in it somewhere. Like moving, like a little C D icon. I'm like, no, I guess it was just the, the letter C D. Huh, I wonder where the rainbow came from. Maybe it's the rainbow rooms where you have like the mirrors and they flash a bunch of gold. The the chapel has like rainbows in the background coming out of the stained glass windows. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Gosh, that's such a pretty game. 
really, really is a good game. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't really think of much else on, like, there's there's a million things about Symphony of the Night. It's just like, there's just a million tiny things. Yeah. Like, um, like we were talking about I Am the Wind. And if you go to like <laughs> this the the side like wall of the castle, I think it's either the the game either it's either like tied to the game's day night cycle, which does exist even though you're entirely indoors and it never changes, um, or it's just random. But sometimes there will be fog and wind in that area, but only sometimes. That is that's true. Yeah, you know, I never really knew that or noticed that. There's another like at the very bottom of that outer wall area there's like a little tiny room you can go into and there's kind of nothing there but there's a telescope and if you use the telescope you can look out onto the the moat of the castle and you just sometimes see the ferryman you have some- to see the ferryman in order to pass through a certain point too um yeah. there's a specific bridge and if you don't look out at this tiny pixelated guy in the water you don't get that bridge and also in that yeah and like also in that room, there is a nest. There's like a bird's nest at the bottom of it. And every time you go in there, what's in the nest goes through a cycle of like a bird comes and lays an egg. And then the it warms the egg. The egg hatches into a new bird. The bird flies off and then it comes back and lays another egg. Yeah, you and can just, watch these generations yeah. of birds. Yeah. yeah, you just watch the whole life cycle of a bird by just going it's in and out. Super of the room. cute. Like those, <laughs> yeah. are, those are completely useless and really int- well, not the ferryman thing, but like all these little details that just bizarre and really cool. Yeah, and all like there's um there are like books that attack you, and when you hit them, instead of bleeding, they bleed letters because they're books. I hate uh, I hate books in every Castlevania game. They make me so mad. <laughs> they are so like where's the hitboxes on these stupid things and the books can't make up their mind they can't make up if they're enemies or platforms <laughs> I hate it I'm like I yeah. can't tell I can't trust books because of these games and like there, <laughs> there are chairs that Alucard can sit in they don't, they don't do anything but if you sit in them and you have the fairy familiar the fairy familiar eventually lands and sits on your shoulder. And then if you leave it for long enough, she starts singing to you. Yeah. It's just full of things like that. Yeah. There's actual a, a, a stage theme that has a very like wispy feminine voice that was meant to originally be the fairy singing to you in that stage. Yeah. But they changed it up. Hmm. <laughs> I'm reading the game over screen. Cause it's always like, as a kid, I never understood what the hell it was. Like, it's bones and a dragon thing and then a cross and it's like, let us go out this evening for pleasure. The night is still young. I'm like, who is <laughs> saying this? It doesn't fit for anything. Like it's 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 more of a shock than I am the wind. Because it's just like you go from this beautiful like pixel art to this like it looks like a I don't know, like a like a something you'd find on a GeoCities page of this like 3D rendered skull. And it's just, and it does this like pixel bleeding you, effect. Yeah, and you hear this voice go, <laughs> "Oh God!" That, yeah, and it takes five minutes to load off yeah. of that screen. Oh, the mm, I spent so much time staring at that stupid three D rendered crap, and I'm like, "Can I just, <laughs> can I just play the game? What kind of freaking monster is that? It's terrible. It's dumb looking. It looks like an iguana <laughs> with horns. I don't." And then, like, whose cross is that? Who photoshopped that in there? <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me irrationally mad. And then you look back at the castle, and there's this teeny tiny, like, I don't know, like, tower. But coming off from it is this, like, super thin branching thing, like, I guess that's holding up. And the bats would be so big. They're as big as the fucking castle parapets. <laughs> and I'm like, how? What are these? And why is the moon so big? And there's clouds behind the moon. <laughs> I, just, I, I I spent so long staring at this screen and getting so irrationally angry at it. Because <laughs> it means I failed. I hate failing in a game where you have to spend that long staring at something so ugly. <laughs> I can make a better 3D fucking skeleton than that. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Five, what ones? 
just got eight reds, but the other side only got four. Five. <laughs> I'm just, I, you know, I only came on this podcast to throw shade. <laughs> well, the, we we haven't talked about like your favorite enemy, which is like we should have talked about at the beginning because he's the second boss, and that's Slogra. Oh yeah, yeah. I, as a kid, <laughs> I I used to think it was Slogra and R Y N, and and I misspelled it, and so now my gamer tag is just a really, really badly spelt Slogra. <laughs> Slogra. Sorry, but adding a Y makes everything sound. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it, it lived through the 90s. I, you know, it's proof. Um, but yeah, I love Slogger. And Slogger is from Or And it's... Yeah. yeah. And he gets carried in by his best bud, Guy Bond. Yeah. Who is much scarier. The OG on Sin and Smoke. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Except they don't absorb each other, and that would be they awesome. they get kind of mad if you kill like they do get yeah. different moves depending on who Guybon you. just gets like a rash and he turns red and shoots three <laughs> fireballs instead of one, and then for they did something real weird with Slogra's design, and they like curled the nose in further instead of yeah. wearing four like he or she or it doesn't really even have a gender um has this like a much straighter scarier pointy nose and slogra is carrying the the gable or gable which mm-hmm. is like this mythical weapon that they never you know touch on or whatever but uh yeah that's that's my favorite i don't know what it is i just think it's a really cool monster and i can't tell what it's supposed to be at all yeah it, it looks <laughs> like um it's like a weird kind of skeleton bird with no wings. It's like a skeleton dinosaur. It, yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's been drawn, uh, like, I'll go ahead and show you the image of the drawing versus the sprite, which makes freaking no sense in the world. Um, oh my god, the sprite's very large and very... That's, yeah, there you go. So the drawing versus the sprite. And as a kid, I never saw the drawing. I only ever saw the sprite. So that's yeah. what I've, like... And even then, guy, uh... Slugra's mouth is almost never open. Yeah. So even as a kid, I, I didn't even know what had a mouth. I thought it was just a giant spiky spike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like a mosquito. It it's really yeah. weird. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's a really cool enemy, and I've just always loved it. It it appeared again um later on in Lord Shadow, but only as this like broken stationary giant skeleton like like house size huge version of it um and i kind of wish they they kind of kept that because there's some super awesome uh concept art of it oh no i'm looking at uh uh, slogra from another castlevania game that i woefully have played um oh mm. Oh, here's here's the concept art this is why lords of shadow one had had some beautiful ideas and i will show you this art because their concepts were just mm-hmm. fantastic. Oh, and, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, so beautiful. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I would have loved to see that be an actual, like, full-on thing. I don't think there was ever going to be an enemy. Uh, but I think it was going to, you know, being kind of like, oh, this once existed, except for the fact that it's huge and scary. Uh, but yeah, no, I can't even tell you why I love the stupid thing, but I think he's great. He is very cute. He is yeah. and he gets carried in by this this like really dopey looking gargoyle nice thing. Gargoyle yeah. bat thing with a huge head. Like its head is too big. And they, they synergize because Gabon picks Slogra up and Slogra's got a spear and he will like drop Slogra on you with the spear extended. Yeah. It's a it's a really fun thing. And then but what's great is like when you fight Gabon without him, he's got all these fire attacks and stuff, but when you fight him in I think Symphony. He really doesn't get to do anything. Hmm. I mean, he's just kind of kind of weak, and, and it's very sad. So he's like the lesser of the two. Aw. Did they show <laughs> up in the anime? Because here's, here's a screenshot of the anime, and I'm not... Yeah, I, I, think they, I think I'm looking at the same one as you, right? It must be the second it season defi- I haven't yeah. watched it. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize. Now I'm going to have to watch it. That's a really bizarre picture. Though. <laughs> <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. I... I uh, I've kind of chatted a little bit with the keyframe animators and uh, like 
the amount of love that went into the series is like I can't deny it. Like they really love it and know their stuff. So I respect them for it. But for them to show up in something that they never showed up in is like they weren't in Castlevania three. So yeah, as far as I know, unless there was a representation of that I wasn't aware of. Uh, I don't. Th- I'm looking at the wiki now, and I don't think they are. Yeah, I don't think so. And they became yeah. like this weird duo that, like, a bunch of people are like, "Yeah, they're 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 the bros. They're going to show up. <laughs> yep. They're they're the, they're the only like monsters I can think of that are like a team. Yeah, and they're so bizarre. They make no sense as like designs. Like Guybon does. He's easy, but <laughs> Slogger's just like I don't know what the hell I am. I'm angry about this. I've got a huge neck that has no bones in it. <laughs> I don't understand. But yeah, I, I use Slogger to kind of like represent myself <laughs> a lot of the time. Because I just like think about him in like this little cloak and he's just like doing his thing. He's like, he doesn't want to be bad. He's just, he's a good guy. He's just stuck taking care of a castle because Dracula won't do shit for him. He's a big whiny baby that's up in his tower drinking. <laughs> so I was like, get over it. Holy crap. So it's like his generals. That's kind of how I think. According to the wiki, he's a knight who serves death. Whatever that means. And death serves Dracula. That's so weird. So, I mean, all the way back to that again, like, why would death serve Dracula? What, unless Dracula is like Satan? I mean, that could be. I mean, maybe he is like. The, the humanoid representation, which I gotta admit, all these different Draculas, they are, they're all kind of... They look different in every castle. But he does turn into a big demon thing with horns. He does! He turns into yeah. a big, creepy guy bond. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know what happened, you guys. You do? Yeah, so in Hell... Everybody had got a 30% raise, and so hell was shut down. <laughs> and so death was looking for a job. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was an opening in, in Castlevania. <laughs> what did yeah. death do before? Like, fucking Etsy. <laughs> like, what did death do? <laughs> death needed a job. Well, I'm glad that hasn't happened to anyone on this podcast lately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You secretly one of Dracula's generals? How did you know this is what he did? <laughs> yeah, did you know like I spent like a week trying to figure out what the hell I was gonna say? <laughs> because I did the same thing for another podcast and I was like, oh no. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I don't know anything. <laughs> what am I gonna say? Oh, why do you like the pale golf? She's got white eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, that that was it. That was my answer. And I'm like, I spent a week. Figuring out what I was going to say and that came out. Thankfully, with you guys, I know a little bit more than like what color the doll uh, eyelashes are. <laughs> but not that much more. Like, there's so much Castlevania that it's hard to keep it straight. Like, yeah. there's a lot of it. There's like 30 plus games. Like, I bet if we ask Nick, who could do like a 15 hour synopsis of all of the Castlevania games. Oh my God. You yeah. can't even synopsis it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you would do that. Like, well, considering there's like multiple, like they they keep contradicting each other and being rewritten and thrown out of the timeline. And <laughs> like, did you know the first Belmont mm-hmm. was going to be a girl, and that she was in love with Alucard and was a baby, and that baby was going to become like a Belmont? Yeah, they took that away. That sounds a lot like something they would do in Passions. In what? <laughs> you are the fire Yeah, no, they retconned uh probably character because uh they can't possibly have a female Belmont. That would just be too weird. So instead they gave us a, a holy night blonde Belmont who says and I quote, I'll destroy you and the night. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> why? That was given to me <laughs> as a birthday gift. And I had already seen like that scene. I never opened it. 
<laughs> I, pl- I played it still on somebody else's, but I never opened it. Cause I'm just like, no, Mm-mm. I'm not, I'm not going to play a game where the, the lead Belmont says, I'll destroy you in the night. How the fuck is he going to do that? Like really? <laughs> That Castlevania is weird. Then they took Simon Belmont and they had OG, uh, Kojima, uh, again, Ayumi Kojima redesign him <laughs> into a big barbarian with hmm. like bright neon red hair. That was weird. Like they've made a lot <laughs> of weird decisions. And then they made a weird version of their own game called Haunted Castle, but it was just a slightly altered uh, <laughs> Castlevania 1. Like, there's so <laughs> many weird things they've done over the years. And yet still, like, the series just isn't going anywhere. Like, the last one was 2014, so who knows? And then their own guy mm-hmm. left, and Igarashi left, and he was like, I'm just gonna make my own Castlevania. Just bye. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> no, you should not ever post that again. I'm so <laughs> into it. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's the artist for um, of, of Death Note, which is is amazing. Yeah, that's that's not even the Belmont I'm talking. That's, that's just that's Belmondo. That's not fucking Belmont. That's just <laughs> Belmondo is his own thing. I refuse to believe that's for a fighting game. Yes, for the <laughs> they made it. Yeah, fighting game called Judgment, where everyone got a redesign. For, I mean, not even for better, just for worse. It's it's got <laughs> little kid magic kids. It's got, I mean, it's got everything that Castlevania doesn't have, and it's really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's wearing snow boots with a little jacket that's undersized for That's chest. a lot of belts. Oh, look at this lady. Like, it tried so hard to be Soul Calibur, which is really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard a little puppy bark in like another trailer and it's so cute. <laughs> and it's a little arc and I'm like, ah, ah, let's get scared. Oh man, that's God, that game. <laughs> and they took characters from the all ever popular classic Castlevania 64 on the Nintendo 64. Mm. Which now. Oh, what is this? Is- Sorry. What, what is this? Sorry, I'm uh, Richie posted something magnificent. That's one of the redesigns. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the redesigns. Yeah, that's yeah. the fighting game. Oh, that's like oh my god. Okay, I thought oh I because I I came back to the chat oh, and I see this. And yeah, I, she's I gorgeous. Didn't know like, where... Some of the designs were really yeah. cool, but uh, should not have picked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, there's there's this guy who is um. He's in one of the Genesis games. And for this one, he's redesigned mm-hmm. and he looks like Emil from Nia. <laughs> I forgot about his design in this <laughs> game. Oh my god. Oh, Eric Lacard. I like the card capture Sakura stuff. Going yeah, on yeah in the magic staff. And <laughs> great. Hang on. They did, they did bring Maria back in it. I'll show you. They did. Yeah, they oh. did. She does just look like a magical girl. Yeah, is she like the little? Yes, that's her. <laughs> that <laughs> oh. <laughs> she looks like uh, Harley Quinn. Yeah, she does. There's like a billion characters that look just like this. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, this is a cute design, but like for Guilty Gear, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just go do that. <laughs> Why is this? Oh, I, I, they, they got a very prominent artist to do some great stuff. And then they mm. got. <laughs> I, I, sadly, I'm going to show you probably one of the first pictures that Kojima did, and uh, it, it's this. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good legs. <laughs> it looks, looks like a glitch. <laughs> <laughs> we just, or like, or like a Soul Calibur Six character where you can control the different dimensions, and they've just like, <laughs> <laughs> like the thigh slider is at maximum. And then the head slider is at minimum. <laughs> He's like, I gotta widen my stance. I gotta look bigger to intimidate. Yeah. It's a very strange picture. It's one of the very few that like actually made me go, wait, what? What, what are you doing? You're such an amazing, prominent artist in this. 
It's strangely mesmerizing. Like it has an effect it, on me, you know? It just makes my eyes figure out which leg I'm supposed to look at because like my eyes yeah. can't go down and look at both. I can't do that with my eyeball. Yeah. Um, but no, um, I'm going to show you the, the Belmont redesign that while very cool, it's very <laughs> weird. And it's the only, <laughs> okay. Teenage me bought a wall scroll. And this is oh my it. God. Nice. It's a beautiful picture though. Yeah. I, this is, this is, uh, it's the only wall scroll I will ever hang in my home and it's in my, my work room <laughs> and it is that, and it is like, I don't like the redesign of Belmont, but I don't give a shit. It's a beautiful picture. It's yeah. Got very Bella Lugosi, Bell, uh, very, um, yeah, <laughs> Bella Lugosi vampire kind of thing going on there. I love it. And her, her pictures yeah. are like, eight feet. they're, mm-hmm. they're all in gouache and which is one of the with. So, it's like, it, yeah, gosh, she's great. She's she's so great. Just mm. her book is very not for children, so please don't buy it if you're under eighteen. <laughs> it's very adult work. She really like nobody who's under eighteen should be listening. I to mean, this. that doesn't mean they don't. Nobody who has human age should be <laughs> listening to this. So everybody listens to this is just secretly like the monsters in in the Castlevania. Yeah. Is it the yeah. Castlevania or a Castlevania? Like, it's just the Castlevania? Well, like, do you want to talk? We haven't brought up the name yet. Okay, let's talk about the name Castlevania. In Japan, it's called Demon Castle Dracula. That's like the literal trend. <laughs> and yeah, Akumaju Dracula. And I, I guess what happened is that because of Nintendo's censorship at the time, they didn't want Demon. In a name. So they just went with Castlevania. Yeah, because then YouTube would be like, hey, you're demonetized now. It's true. <laughs> demonetized! <laughs> Nintendo demonetized Konami! <laughs> I'm here for that. I would, I would, yeah. I would, I would subscribe and save them. If only Konami <laughs> still existed. Because <laughs> they kind of don't. Aww. They went into like, Mm. Sorry, so I totally interrupted Richie yet again, and I was even interested in what he was about to say. Oh. So go ahead, Richard. Tell us again what what is the meaning of Castlevania? Doesn't mean anything. I think they just because it's like tra- Transylvania and Castle, and that sounded cool at the time. But we're now wedded to it. <laughs> we're now I just like we're cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, like mm-hmm. Resident Evil, which is a title that makes less sense the more you think about it. Well, like the original was Biohazard, which yeah, it's Biohazard, and there was there was a band called Biohazard that owned the trademark, so they couldn't call it Biohazard. Oh. Out- yeah, so they just went with Resident Evil for some reason. Oh, and they were like, oh, well, we can't. Like, Biohazard itself was just such a forgettable name, but Resident Evil is like okay. Yeah. I'm just pasting pasting pachinko machine images into the chat. Images. I want one. <laughs> I want to play one so bad. And I have to go to Japan to do it. And they still exist. They're still out in the pachinko parlors. Man, look at how happy Dracula's face is. <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm rolling my cursor around him like, like little hearts are popping up everywhere. It's so cute. He's so thrilled to be on a pachinko machine. It has been <laughs> his goal since forever. To be on a pachinko. Mm, maybe he like rises every hundred years to play pachinko, and he never gets to. He can't leave his castle. So mm. <laughs> maybe that's secretly what the Belmonts are trying to. Do. And these monsters are just like, no, you can't. And he's like, okay, well, I just, I just want to play pachinko. Yeah. Maybe somebody should bring him a pachinko machine, and then he won't be so bitter and dramatic. I mean, what if he had an arcade? He had everything, but. Pachinko. I mean, that's. I mean, I'd be mad too. Yeah, I want to play that pachinko. It's not just pachinko; it's also a pachinko machine. So it's got like it's just it's really cute, and it looks like original art just for that, and it's really good work. <laughs> it's so. Cool. Yeah, there's a bunch of like there's. I really got to check out that puzzle iOS game because I guess they they changed the sprites a little bit. And it is an official thing that they did. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. that's cute. Uh, also, mm-hmm. you know, Simon Belmont made it into Smash, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and it's the Conan the Barbarian version, which is my favorite. 
Mm. So I, I got to have shout outs to that. Really excited. I, I mm. don't play Smash at all. So it's like, I'm not going <laughs> to get it, but I, I'm just like, yeah, cool. Oh, here, yeah. here's one last picture for you. This is like the first media representation. <gasps> yes. From Captain N. And one of the best. <laughs> That's truly. amazing. He's, he's, he's great. He's a big dumb doofus. And uh, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's more line of what I named my. That's yeah. more close to <laughs> how Belmont is. And it's weird to just say Belmont because I forget that it's a castle. <laughs> so I'm just screaming out Belmont when he. <laughs> but yeah, so we definitely we can wrap this up. I think discuss yeah. all there is. I mean, like you could yeah. have gotten a, a real life. Story, but no, you chose. <laughs> And I'm honored. Aww. Okay, Richard, do proper outro. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> do proper outro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that was a discussion of the Castlevania series with a focus on Symphony of the Night and what came before and kind of what came after and Pachinko. <laughs> Our guest was Neo Lucky, who is an artist. Where can people find you for art things? At neolucky.com. I make things easy. So you can find every link to everything. All right there. That was easy. I went to neolucky.com and I see. It's really pretty. You are super talented. Oh, thank you. It's, it's uh, games like Castlevania that kind of inspired me to get into just illustration in general, so I owe it a lot to Castlevania, so I was very excited to be on the show. Aww. Everybody should, uh, you know, join and uh, go to their Patreon as well. <laughs> should also mention that you were on Don't Give Up Skeleton. Yes, yes. I was. And, and one thing that I'm very proud of is Igarashi has seen my artwork. <gasps> I have art in a game that's being produced that made it to Bit Summit a couple years ago called Brave Earth by Kayan of Kayan Works, the also the creator of I Wanna Be the Guy. So I have art featured in that. It's very inspired by Castlevania and Ninja Gaiden. It's 8 bit. And uh Igarashi played it at Bit Summit and he saw my work. Very excited Yay. and inspired. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I the only thing I, I ever Push. I'm like, You're basically famous. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'm just absolutely <laughs> fabulous. I know it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh, oh, <laughs> thanks for inviting me. I'll come on anytime and shit my way through something that I, I pretend to know a lot about. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, no, no, seriously. I'll get up at 5 o'clock for you, and I don't do that for many people. Oh. Oh. She meant me, not for you. It wasn't a general you. It was for you, Sin. <laughs> no, because I'm already talking. That's too much shit. I am a general.